ladies and gentlemen, to Epic 26, the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Championship, sponsored by Fast Host and the lovely partners over at Grovner Casino. Once again, my name is Yumi. I'll be joined by who else but Dweg for this uh, for this best of three in the very first out of the group stages. Yeah, and I've also got a fun fact for you. I just thought I'd get it in now. Oh. First map's Mirage, right? Yeah. And I have heard that in Icelandic, Mirage has said Mirage. And that's how they say it. Like when you Q face it with Icelandic, that's what they say. They say play Mirage. Because Mirage. that is Mirage in Icelandic. Huh. Just thought I'd just let you know. Fair enough. That's a nice trivia to have. I yeah, well, I mean, if, if you're ever in that situation <laughs> and they say Mirage and you don't know what it is, they say Mirage. I remember that from the CSGO pop quiz in like 15 <laughs> years when that's the Yeah. Thing. <laughs> when we all look back on the days and how we see us was. You're like, oh man, what was that thing that Drake told me? It was so important. <laughs> this is, is $50,000 on this pub quiz on the line. But of course, guys, we're just coming back from the break. We do finally have our vetoes in. We have the, at least the first two maps available. We do have uh, Mirage as the first one, as you can see. And I do believe we're going to Dust 2 as our second map. So. If it goes the full best of three series, if it goes all three maps, we will be able to relay that information as well, but that may be a little bit uh, more delayed. But coming into this first map, 7.2, starting on that CT side. Well, it is surreal towards CT at the moment. Execute coming out towards the T's, and the CT's have to try and hold off at this point. Surreal needs to try and hit these first shots, and so far he's given his information away. Sliggy falling back towards connector has just decided to not get too aggressive in the round and just let the T's get control. But it is going to be, is that Razorback? Is that what you say? Ryback. Ryback. Ryback to find one. So far, Ooh. Surreal getting the bomb down. So a nice kill coming out from Surreal. As he now has complete control of the bomb and can really call cool a rotation coming out from his teammates. Yeah, bomb drop. I need, need to do quite a lot here to get back onto the site. The rotation now coming in from 7.2's anchor player in mid towards B, but Laza will take down Pommy as he begins to progress up those stairs. Shane Ape trying to get some early contact, now getting away with the bomb. He's going to begin backing away. He's made it all the way through the ramp, and I think he was just spotted just before he made it into coverage. So 7.2 should be at least somewhat aware that this is a possibility, and they are beginning to make rotations accordingly. Bit of a uh, fake coming out from uh, Shaney as he now decides to wrap around towards Palace. But unfortunately, there is two CTs looking towards this A-bomb site. One in towards this jungle mid-area, the other on the A-bomb site, and oh, Shaney, that's such an important kill. There's no members coming from CT at the moment, so this 1v2 is actually possible coming out from Shaney. Definitely has a good chance, but he needs to find Ooh. this kill. Okay, Shaney, he needs to follow up on another one. Shaney, the FPL star and the UK player. Shaney needs to come alive here when it's needed. 27 HP onto Maze. And Shaney needs to hit this headshot. Shaney, can he do it? Oh. Yes, he can. 1v3 coming out from Shaney. That just seemed pretty easy for him. Yeah, those first two kills were just surgical. The precision there from Shaney to be able, able to find those first two kills. The third one, not quite as gracious, yeah. but he'll, he'll stick the landing. Horus, get that pistol round off the back of the 1v3 coming out from Shaney. Yeah, very well done coming out from the Terrace as they do pick up the pistol round. And now we have 7.2 and below. Coming into this with a few upgraded pistols, some P250s and some Deagles, but no armor and utility. So not the force buy coming in, but just a, a light buy. As we do see the T side already granted mid control, and you'll you'll often find, especially in these rounds, the CTs will just opt to play a little bit passive, not try and uh, counter the control, as they're not going to get very far by doing that. But uh, so far, Horus Esports making their way towards feet. And it's going to be an absolute fest as two kills go in favour. Now the third and 7.2 and below, not really answering back with anything in this round. Yeah, quite quite a few players tagged down to low HP, but not really able to finish off those kills. 7.2, if they could maybe convert on a couple of those players, it would be nice just to sort of keep the economy minimal for a horse. We take some rifles away. Loves even tagging that player up in through the murder hole. Yeah, horse are going to... I don't think they're going to chase too far. He's just making sure that Lazo doesn't flank all the way through. But Surreal is now the last remaining, and surely not long for this world. Maybe able to get a few consolation frags here, especially with MBL a little bit on the hunt, and approaching from CT should be his demise. Ooh, 11 HP. Okay, he finds the kill to Finwy. He's Finwy's kind of whiffed it a little bit. Yeah, he, he had a backstab, but Homie finishes off the job. Horse keep three, which is the magic number, and they 
it is crucially those rifles that stay equipped. So, Horus, they're able to build up a little bit of economy here, but now 7.2 will answer back with their own buy. We're seeing a couple of orgs already in the very first gun run for them. Oh, I like to see it. I didn't like it at first, but I like to see it now. The orgs and the M4s coming out as the CT side try and set the pace early on. And I kind of like this economy change that you are able to get a buy up around earlier than normal. But Lather, going to be able to find the first just before the smoke blooms. And Shaney up close and personal, looking to try and trade, but unfortunately, the CTs have fallen back in towards the site. May's just sitting here in this off angle, looking towards the apartments at the moment. That HE doing a lot of damage. MBL actually finding one onto Luzza. But so far, Ryback as well. That's such a crucial kill, especially towards that A bomb site. Yeah, Surreal's the anchor player. He was really looking for some information, maybe just trying to spot up short. But with his presence now lost, 7.2 needs to make rotations. And so, Sleeky is able to deal with the initial contact. But tag to 46 HP, he's going to play things a bit more passive, double it with his teammates, and actually concede most of the bomb site here for Horus. Yeah, it's going to be difficult coming out for the CTs, especially that they haven't really found out the information. What a... That is unbelievable. Sleeky down to 13 HP and finds his teammate. Yeah, the problem here is that he's trying to rotate around, but on the other side, Shaney is lying in wait. He could hear him rotating in through spawn, and so it's an easy kill for Shaney to be able to pick up at the end there. Horus, start off with a clean sheet thus far, 3-0 and at 7.2, still having a few struggles to start things off. Things look good to start off the pistol, but uh, it just seemed like they weren't able to keep track of where Shaney could uh, really move himself. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of crucial kills so far, or early on in this game, going in favour of the T-side. We've seen a lot of angels go fantastically well. Uh, it, it, it's a good sign to see their sharp aim coming to life, and it's coming into uh, this fourth round. The 3-0 to zero lead coming out from the T-side. As we now have 7.2 and below, having two players towards this B-bomb site. The HE touching down, doing a little bit of damage. But Horace looking to extend this lead even further. He has only two players on this B-bomb site to really deal with the contact play here coming out from Horace. The jump spot will be unsuccessful at first, but Mace does spot them out. Now this will prompt the aggression, but Mace finds the first kill. He's able to reposition and try to bait them into cryptic. His cross there, he gets the first, cannot adjust for the second, but Mace is there for the trade. Two kills so far for the Horus Esport side as they're trying to recover this round. Shaney and MBL, they don't want to give up these rifles, give enough space for them to work with, and Horus are able to close it out. 4-0 as things did look a bit scary, especially with those first three kills going the way of 7.2, but just uh, the, the sort of calm, methodical play from those two riflers able to shut things down. Look, that, that's real class. To see Shaney and MBL go b down in a 2-on-4 to clutch it out with, either, with neither of them dying, that shows real class on this horror side. And now we see the AWP onto Sliggy. Doesn't decide to shoot through the flames, but watching the smoke. Ooh. And what is that from Shane? I mean, an AWP player pushing through the smoke, almost expecting that Sliggy's going to be holding that angle without even falling back. Wow. That's yeah. impressive. Well, you know, we, we just kind of talked about Sliggy as, uh, as obviously an ex-player, now primarily an observer. Maybe... He, he wasn't expecting that from, from the likes of Shaney. Shaney is, if, if you've ever watched him play FPL on stream or just via other people's streams, he is a, quite a he's quite an explosive player sometimes. He, he had those first few weeks into FPL where people thought he was legitimately just insane. And then he kind of found his place, to fill his role and do, doesn't have as many standout performances, but still really hitting consistent numbers. So 7.2, they're going to have this crossfire set up to deal with the push from here, from Horus, Ramp and ticket booth at their disposal, but they put it to this one on two. Pommy is the last remaining player. He needs to be concerned about cryptics on the rotation, but he does have the majority of the bomb site to kind of work around if he's going to wait for this rotation to come through. Yeah, well, he's got a lot of time as well, and he can get his way back towards a bomb because at the moment he should be able to get to that bomb without being seen. But he's just holding this very tight angle. He knows that there's a player towards CT, but for Pommy here, he really just needs to try and find that first fight. If he takes both of them at the same time, he's just not going to be able to win it. He needs to try and isolate these fights. He spots out one, spots out the second. This is it from Pommy. Can he answer back? 1v1, and he's got the angle from Pommy. Another clutch going in favour of the T's, and it seems as this Horus, they have clutch after clutch after clutch. 5-0 and lead, and it seemed like the perfect setup. Both the CTs towards CT weren't peaking. 
And Pommy makes that work. What a 1v2. Yeah, and that's the thing about Pommy. I think there are, there are a few question marks coming into this event, whether he'd be uh, well practiced with this team. He's, I think there are some motivation issues that he's, uh, he's talked about before, other people have mentioned. Um, but it seems like he's coming alive. He's, yeah. he, he, that, that experience definitely showing in that in, as soon as he baited out that first player. Uh, he, he just he had everything under his control, and with it being the AWP of Luzza as well, it's it's hard to win out that one v one, especially with the position known. Well, seven point two and below, having a little bit of a rough start on the early days of Mirage. So we see Deagles across the board for them, and Horus Esports control of towards mid and towards of the apartment base. Gonna be instantly taken out. The Deagle not raining anything down. Pommy now on the entry. Teammates with him. And it's just the 5-7 onto the side. Cryptic able Ooh. to find two. This is a nice shooting coming out from Cryptic. The oh. third! Oh, a fourth! Stolen away by Lusso at the end there. He wow. gets the three, but those are crucial kills. Cryptics. Yeah. Okay. The, the thing is, Cryptics, I'm pretty sure, is a free agent. So if you're... Uh, <laughs> have, you oh, have you just seen that clip? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pick yeah. him up. No, not a free agent anymore, it seems. That's mad. That that the way that's the way that seven point two get back into this game, right? They they invested into those pistols. Now they're on a double AWP setup, just straight up out of nowhere, right? They they'd half point into the round horse on a chain of rounds, but now the the the, the script is completely thrown out the window. Very horse, big, are, horse are now on the eco. Yeah, it's a very big turnaround. That round should not have happened at all. I mean, uh, it's heroic. We've seen it. We've seen it so many times that the pistols in the right position and the right timing can do stuff like that, the imaginary. And for 7.2 and below, you would not think it would be that round that grants them their first. Yeah, certainly some heroics being displayed by both teams so far. Horus with the majority, so as we get into round number seven, but 7.2, they're, they're looking to get back into things. This is a, an accumulator round if I've ever seen one, but especially with these forward positionings here from Horus, they could get caught off guard by just how close they are up short, especially, those two players rotating back, they're going to call now to uh, maybe go up short just because they know that there's one less player to deal with on that B-bomb site. Yeah, well, Sliggy's holding the connector at the moment, so here's actually going to be Ryback in towards this window room at the moment. And Shady, oh, he finds that kill onto Sliggy. Hugging the wall and towards the stairs, but the AWP is finding work. Surreal and Luzza both finding kills. MBL actually with the Deagle to find one. Surreal trying to follow up again, up close with the Deagle and the AWP, and he could actually get caught off here. And oh my god, don't tell me it's happening again. It's all down to Maze, a 1v2. And with little time left on the clock, the bomb finally going to be planted. Only a flash to use on the M4 player, but a 1v2. Shaney with the AWP and MBL with the Deagle. What can they do? 7.2 and below. They need to try and get this clutch to not be reset. Maze, he's trying to isolate these fights, but it's difficult. He doesn't have the information, and there it is from Shaney. Oh, my God. Just as you think 7.2 might be able to get some rounds together, Horus steal it right back. And that's that's a huge credit to, to MBL on that Lurk play up short. The fact that he gets himself into ladder room, hears them fall back. When they decide to hit onto that A-bomb site, that's when he springs into action and finds that kill. You, Mace was so late on the rotation because he had to honor that MBL may just flank all the way through CT, all the way through jungle just to siphon them off. And as a result of that, it gives Horus some really advantageous gunfights. Yeah, that was just crazy. Coming out from Horus... Completely reset 7.2 and below, but we do have two AWPs. And I'd be interested to see how they use them. God, they're really hoping something goes right here. If, yeah. If Horus are somehow able to bypass these orbs, this round is basically over. And I, I don't imagine Horus would hunt them down just given their economy is not in the best of spots, but they, they really rely on things. Oh, that's, I mean, what, what can you say? MBL's crept up, he's been shot from above. The like, Deagle. Yeah, that is the Deagle. So far, Horus. Oh my oh. god, the bomb dropped as well. This could not get any worse for Horus. A Surreal able to pick up an AK, so we have two orbs and an AK to use on the CT side. The bomb dropped towards a main, and now there's four CTs towards the same bomb site. Sliggy as well, finding a kill. Was that a. That must have been a wall bang. And oh my god. Okay, no words. Um, so we've had an eco win, an eco win, and an eco, an eco win. win. Yeah, three in a row. The trifecta. Can't beat it. Okay.
is that how this game's gonna go now? I suppose. Can we not win gun rounds? Have we have we given up on those? Well, given that the the, the track record for these isn't all too bad, Horus are going to sort of half buy into this, keep around 2k. They're yeah. hedging their bets. Um, if they do walk away with this, suddenly that's a huge swing for Horus because they'll be in a great economic situation. 7.2 off the save again. And we'll just continue to see the back and forth. But it doesn't seem like that's to be the case because 7.2 have dealt with the connector rush very, very easily. Yep, yeah, not really finding anything. I like the strat there. They had a flash to go in towards connector and sort of just push their way in. They know that Slinky's been holding the connector area pretty much every round. And they might actually try and punish Sliggy because like you said expo player now observer he might not be the best on the playing field in this lineup so maybe that's a tactic coming out from Horace to like target Sliggy well if it is it hasn't really worked out too far he's, yeah. he's, 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 done, he's done okay for himself he's pulling his weight and Horace if that was a part of the game plan they'll have to reconsider it and maybe even actually use a different approach so real opens up the round finding Shaney by himself towards a ramp but oh my god what is that for Pommy Three quick Deagle headshots. That brings Horus back into a really competitive position. A two on three, Cryptics and Surreal up against Deagles. Surreal gonna be able to answer it back into a two on two. The bomb making its way towards B and there's no CTs in presence. Yeah, the bomb should be able to get planted here for Horus and if Ryback gets into a position that Cryptix isn't expecting it, it, it this, this comes down to whether Cryptix clears his angles, how long he holds this for. Horus, they're doubling up. Oh no, the timing might not work out. Cryptix, he's beginning to make some noise. I think he's trying to bait out that peak, but as he scopes in, they're, they're so close to him. They have to spring into action sometime soon. Oh, he'll get the first with a no scope. Finwi there for the trade. Surreal now has to win this in the 1v1. Hits it with oh. the. He tried to stick it all the way through, but Finwi's there with the AWP. <laughs> some of the some of the individual plays that are coming out from Horus is are actually ridiculous. They've won what a one v two. They they've had Pommy hit three Deagle headshots. They've had Shady win the one v three. What more can you ask for them? I mean, I know these two these two teams are incredibly stacked with skill, but it's just. It's, it's, it's giving them the opportunities, I think, as well. I think uh, they've certainly got the mechanics and uh, the experience to make these plays, but the fact that they're even getting into these 1vx's that, that they're capable of winning, every 1vx is a mistake by the other team. There, there are very few where you'll be like, oh, there's nothing they could have done, when that's just not the case. Well, so far, the T's getting control towards mid. Smoke's coming out towards window room, and the CTs aren't really contesting. Slinky actually has quite a nice angle. Should catch out the boost coming up, and there it is. Slinky to start things off. A very good opening coming out from the CT side, but he needs to try and get his teammates to come in. Finwee with a nice AWP kill. And so far, just under a minute left on the clock. Surreal has got himself in a little bit of an interesting position. In towards Tetris, finds the first. Luzzer as well with the AWP, trying to chime in, but now it's all down to Shaney. 1v4. In a very difficult situation, but it seems as if, at the moment, it's been all Horus Esports on Mirage. And like you said, how many... I, I can't even count how many individual plays we've seen come out. Shaney as well. Now on a one on four, trying to make this possible. Oh, Surreal's beginning to get a little bit inquisitive. He will hit the shot, however. Shaney had him lined up, but couldn't hit the shot fast enough. 7.2 up to four. Horse still sitting at seven. And this is going to be another round where I think this is a bit awkward for, for Horus. I said, yeah, they're going to buy. Four of them could afford uh, full rifles, or three of them rather, and uh, the rest have gone with utility and deagles. So. We'll see how this approach works, just because 7.2 do have that double up setup, and they have the org in play as well. So if, if they take these long angle in engagements, it's probably going to go horribly wrong for Horus. But considering they're running the double up, they're not really getting too much information from it. Mace is able to deal with MBL in middle, but the majority of Horus are going uncontested out of the B apartments. Yeah, they might even be able to get this bomb down pretty easily. Maze in towards short. A very crucial kill indeed. And that allows time for the rotations to come in from the rest of his teammates. But Maze getting stuck with holding a grenade out. Now it's a three on two. Shaney with two. And now it's answering back. The AWP from Cryptic's doing a lot of damage. As now we have Ryback and Finwee left. A two on two. The bomb being planted on towards this B bomb site. And Horace 
They left in a post plan. The mole pops gonna force him to the right, but Finwi! He gets the kill onto Cryptix, the grenade finds the kill right back onto Ryback. Into the one-on-one, -on -one. Luzza playing around the pillar, but there what? it is! That's the quick scope if I've ever seen one from Luzza. Damn, that was fast. That was really quick. How how many how many one v ones are we gonna see? That's the question. I feel like a few. I mean, like you said, both these teams very stacked with high yeah. with high tier Counter Strike players in the region, and they're all showing individually their skill. I mean. If you were to compare this to any of the best of ones we've seen today, you just couldn't. The skill level is so much higher. Ooh, Luzzle will get, win at the opening goal in through middle. Shaney is about to go for the wide swing with the Deagles in hand, and Luz is going to pick up two for himself. So, pretty easy shots for him to hit. No punish immediately there for Horus. And yeah, it's going to be a clean round for 7.2. So, they went for a pretty detrimental situation. They were 5-0 at one point, and... Uh, they win a pistol round, then it's they had that whole back and forth. But now, 7.2, they seem to have somewhat stabilized. They're bringing things a lot closer. Yeah, it, it's good to see because it, it seemed like Horus was, was all over it at one point. But now, we are seeing uh, the lead shortened by Horus. And look at this, aggressive towards middle. I like this play coming out from Sliggy and Surreal. We haven't seen this. And they could get so much information in towards the bear apartment if they get more aggressive. Yeah, Luzzle will keep them preoccupied in middle for now. Surreal beginning to work his way <gasps> back, and that's the bomb siphoned off. Sliggy has full control, and he can recover a weapon as well off the back of that. Surreal springing in from the underpass finds two. A oh. third as well. It's now just Shady with the AWP, and with the bomb smoked off, all of these players still alive on 7.2. This is surely an unwinnable position, but if there's anyone on that side that could do it, it's likely Shaney. He gets the first one to Surreal, but still so many more to find. Yeah, it's going to be a very difficult challenge for Shaney. But let's see what he can bring to the table. AWP in hand, currently sitting at 14 to 8. The CTs at the moment not really giving him any options of what he can do as they're playing very passive indeed. And that's again going to be another bit of utility to stop him getting further aggressive to get towards that bomb. And this is so annoying to play, especially in this kind of situation. Shaney, he's trying to find an opening, but the CTs, they're playing so passive that... Realistically, you just can't do anything about it, but Smoke come out, and I'll be interested whether he flanks through a main. Yeah, he just doesn't have enough time to make that work, however. I think the, the biggest issue is the clock, and he, he waited and waited and waited until 7.2 made a mistake and overpeaked, but they just kept uh, sort of pre-firing the angles, expending utility like you'd said, and there'll be apartments to keep him busy, and Shaney was given no opportunity to come back into the round, and they actually drop him in the end. Coming through CT spawn, Luz is able to recover the AWP of all things, and of course that is his weapon of choice. That's a bit of a shame. It is a little bit. I think he'd hope to bring that into this next round, because Horus, their economy is not in a good way. Nah. We're seeing a few pistols, a MAC-10 and a UMP. A 7.2 and below, once again that double orb set up and it's done so much damage so far. Luzza in the window room, currently being Molotov. Actually that was a missed Molotov! Wow, Luzza should have capitalised off that, but it is going to be MBL to start things off. Surreal as well, impressing me today. Luzza with the Deagle and the AWP. And now it's all down and the Ryback, and he can't find anything. So MBL the last one remaining. We've seen what he could do with the Deagle in the past. Already given information of where one of the CTs are. Oh, he knows. He knows where Cryptix is. This could be so perfect. Oh, that was close. It was close. Yeah. Good effort. If, nice if, try. If that, was, if that was the case, you'd have to... I still have to favor 7.2. How many 1vxs have yeah. they won? Or, or like the 2v4 when they were on a, when they were almost taken out of a round. Uh, I mean, 7.2 seemed like the more... So a structurally sound team, but I feel like Horus definitely more individually skilled in terms of uh, being able to uh, punish your opponents for the mistakes. It, it's, cer it's certainly shown in those uh, clutch moments, but it, it's also somewhat indicative as well that they maybe don't have as much structure for, for how they want to approach the game, and that may reflect on their CT side. Well, the pistol's coming out. Just now we see... An interesting setup is it seems like it's a B split with one towards A. So a little bit of a flank coming out or a lurk play. Surreal is going to be the first one to fall. And it's going to be Luzza to open things up. Shaney in towards the bench. Needs to connect some shots or at least delay the tease. And he can't do it. Sliggy finds a nice frag. 
But the CT is already there in position, in towards market at the moment. And a three on three could favour anyone at any moment, depending on where the next kill goes. The bomb down, Luzza, watching towards market in the corner at the moment. Needs to hit this first shot, can't really do it. There it is, finally Luzza to open up. Now the rest of the team, they all start spreading at the same time. All start peaking at the same time. And here we go, Slicky, coming huge at the moment. And look at that fantastic pistol round display coming out from 7.2 and below. And they play that 3v3 very well. Yeah, and they get themselves up short to split that B bomb site. So you could tell just Horus were in a bit of turmoil. The fact that MBL is kind of split between two different angles. He gets hit uh, straight through the side, and suddenly that puts far too much pressure on Cheney to lock things down on that B bomb site. So a fantastic round coming out from 7.2. It did get a little bit close. I, I think, especially with those sort of missed shots from Laza when they were coming out of market, you'd, I was a little bit scared for him. But able to, to walk away with the round so far. And with these SMGs now, they should really be prodding into these bomb sites, seeing if they can't identify a stack if there is one from Horus, which of course we can see is on that B site. Just a few pistols to use in this round for Horus. But yeah, like you said, unfortunately the stack's towards B, which means it's going to be a bit of an open plan coming out from the T's. But 7.2 oh. and below, this has been a very big turnaround for them. I think it was like six and two at one point. Yeah, Doris. yeah. From five and zero to six to two to this. Yeah. Big turnaround coming out from seven point two and below, and it shows. I mean, we spoke about horrors a lot of the time. All the rounds that they won were just on clutches. So now we're getting in to the BT rounds. Maze, Mac ten, blinded enemy, and Fifteen not going to be able to find anything. Luz are actually going to fall. So Shaney's actually able to find two in the round. How is this round? Oh, no way! Did you kill him? Oh, the bomb. It doesn't do enough damage. He's down to 6 HP. I just can't believe how much damage pistols have done a Mirage. Yep. I mean, th we've seen it before, but Mirage has been a different story with pistols. Or Ecos, to be to be uh, more... More specific, yeah. yeah. You're 100% you're right. I mean, that that impacts 7.2 quite a lot if they're not able to win this round. Um, Horus able to afford it. Pretty much the same buy that they have, but... Uh, with one more rifle. So they're hoping that Luzza can maybe find a, a quick headshot, maybe even take Shaney out of the round because he doesn't have armor. But he's going to progress up so much faster than expected. Look how far Luzza's gone. He's all the way at the back of the bomb site. He's found Shaney. He's bypassed Finwi altogether. There's still one player on the site, and Luzza's pushed all the way into market to find that kill. Horus are completely caught off guard by that. The, the, those flashes were perfect as well to allow him out. Yeah, look, and I, I think as well, they weren't used to that pace. I mean, that was one of the first times we've seen Horus get very fast and aggressive, just straight out towards B. And a big play coming out from Luzza, but other than that, I don't think, yeah, the, the protocol wasn't there from Horus. They they weren't able to stop that pressure. So well, now, yeah, now things aren't looking too good for Horus. No. Because uh, 7.2, this should ideally be an accumulator. Obviously, the, the last time they were in this situation, uh, Horus did do quite a lot of damage. But they still got SMGs in place, so they're going to scout with Mace and Cryptics. Mace will take first contact, find the first frag. And with that kill onto Pommy, that should secure the B-bomb site for his teammates to traverse. And he's still on the hunt. He still wants some additional money with that SMG if he could farm it. Well, that's the greatest thing, especially when you've got an SMG and you know you're up against a buy of pretty much just complete pistols. You can just keep trying to farm the economy because if you die, it doesn't really matter because you can buy an AK into the next. So, a lot more information coming out. What I really like here is how much damage these MAC-10s have done. Surreal should be able to line up a second, easily done. And Surreal's been impressing me. I mean, I I, I remember Surreal oh, yeah. when he was on Complexity and how, uh, how great he was when he was on Epsilon, but... After he lost, uh, or I guess he left Epsilon, then came back, I think? Um, he, I believe so. I, I, as, as far as my memory serves... Uh, he had a bit I, of a break, I think. Yeah, I mean, he, he went to Complexity, he played with uh, Epsilon, I think he was cons I think he was considering stepping down. Uh, right, and then uh, came back. Yeah, he played with like Fish123, yep. um, he played with a few mixed teams, but I think he was still under contract, so he could still sort of jump back into the roster, and then when that opportunity arose, he did actually take it, I think, so. Well, here we go, the 20th round, and the B execute once again. It is going to be Pobby 
and Finwee. And Finwee so far not connecting the first AWP shot or the second instant trade. Two AWPs entering on the B-bomb site from the T-side. Now, I can't say I've seen that before. Surreal at what is just oh happening. God. Ryback, the last one remaining in a one on five. What an opening with those AWPs. He's, they're getting absolutely steamrolled on that B-bomb site and they haven't really put up much of a fight in stopping him. The pistol round was the closest one, but since then they've just been getting completely hammered over there and I don't think that they, they have a response just yet. Because even if you, uh, the B apartments is probably the hardest place on the map to aggro as a CT. You can maybe make a play towards underpass, but that's really as far as that goes. You can't take straight up fights. Oh my god, Ryrak, he's trying to go for it. He spotted out. Nah, there's nah, surely no not. What? No. They're not. Why are they not shooting at him? What? Oh my god. Oh, there wasn't what? enough time. Oh my if god. he would have got on there that split second earlier. Why wasn't he shooting at him? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. Oh my god. Doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> well, that could have been something. That could have been the highlight of uh, of day two. Yeah. We had, we had a... Um, we had, at my very first epic line, we had a ninja defuse. Really? From, from JCMX on that. Was it similar to that? Uh, it was on Inferno, and nobody was anywhere. They were all hunted for him, and he just, he slithered past. He's, he's a slippery guy. Oh, deagles. Okay. Surreal has just been owned. Okay. Sheesh. Of course, Horus, the majority of them are stacked onto this A bomb site, so with that one kill being there, there's still more reinforcements behind it. I think they might catch them off guard because of that. And Finwe finds a kill to Sliggy. Shaney's bringing it to action as well. Now 7.2, they're going to try and hightail it out of there. That opens up the opportunity to recover these weapons, but given the amount of space that Cryptix has created and the fact that MBL is right in his crosshair, he's uh, able to find the kills. And the fact that Luzza is able to get two from Connector as well is. Uh, Apparently it was pretty swift. We didn't see it on camera, but it was swift. <laughs> yeah. Look, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of members stepping up for 7.2 and below. And, and like you said, Horace, they've been struggling on Mirage. And uh, I would like to have a little bit of clarification of uh, whose map pick this is. I'm sure we'll find out. But 7.2 and below, it's interesting for me to see that they've really been able to steamroll and not have that many rounds. It didn't seem like they weren't in control. I think this is actually Horus's map pick. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that's a bit of a concern moving forward. Of course, I think uh, with Dust 2, I anything think could happen. Yeah, with Dust 2 being the second map, both of these are pretty like aim-heavy maps. Mirage probably more strategically uh, cap or more <laughs> strategies available um, <laughs> Dust than on Dust 2. But at the same time. The, the, the basics are the same. 7.2, already taking very strong control of this A bomb site, getting into the post plant. Luzza securing CT for now. Horus needs to fight back from behind, and they do have a kid to work with on Palmy, but he's gonna get taken out. Luzza as well finds a kill to Cheney. He's on for the ace, but Ryback denies it. It's a real there for the trade, and that has been pretty much the story for 7.2 is that an individual really steps up, hits these. Uh, really high impact frags and even if they go down there's somebody right behind them ready yeah. to pick up the pieces no you're right and you look at the side of Horus 19 and 17 Shaney and he's the only member that's positive uh, it, it, it's a real shame to see because he's stepping up individually but his team isn't and this is the circumstance that they're just rushing out towards a Ryback surely should be able to line up a few finds at first instantly traded and oh no oh no Wait, we got a freeze frame. Does Shaney hit this shot? Oh, he d oh, oh, no, okay. he MBL, MBL got it. He hit the headshot, to be fair. MBL getting two. Surreal able to trade eventually. Oh, but there's wow. Surreal. Kind of lining up the frag onto Shaney as well. Brings it onto the two on two. The bomb is dropped, but that smoke will allow them to recover it. And Finwee's position is really the one that can change the game. Bomb actually spamming them through the smoke. Never mind. Scratch that. Finwee, yeah. You know, you're not needed, it seems. But Surreal in the 1v2 most certainly is needed. And Finwee will take him down. So. They both contribute, and I, I was I suppose the X factor of Pommy spamming through the smoke, but uh, they need a lot more rounds, way better, way more convincing than that, because that is the first time I think we've seen since Pistol that they've taken more than three players down on the 7.2 side. They've, I'm pretty sure it's been four players alive, three, three, four, <laughs> something like that. I try to I try to keep track, but my my memory isn't what it used to be, I'm like a goldfish at times. Right, Brack. Already spotting out Surreal, but so far no damage being done. Surreal knows exactly where he is. Then that is such a beautiful frag. Shaney now in towards the stairs. Luzza just on the other side. His teammate going to help him out. 
as Shaney re-aggresses. Swaps out the AK, but the teams are going to hear that, and surely Shapitz are in. Shaney somehow finds a kill. Instantly traded. Now a three on two, and Horace Esports, they're not really near this A-bomb site. It is going to be Pommy in towards CT, and Finwe in towards Jungle. And so far, all up to Pommy left. A 1v3 clutch, and there it is. 16 to 8, Michael. And I tell you what, that was impressive.